Good Tuesday afternoon. It is September 19th and September as a whole certainly living up to the peak of hurricane season climatologically where 34% of all named systems throughout the year occurred during this month. 97% of all storms happen from June 1st to November 30th hurricane season in the Atlantic. But that other 3% mainly happens in May and then December as well. So we can get out of season hurricanes just certainly not as common out there. Now, how are we doing so far in our predictions? Well, the National Weather Service predictions for this hurricane season. Well, they predicted hurricanes anywhere from five to nine of them. And of those, two to five would become a major hurricane. So far, we've had seven hurricanes, four of them being major hurricanes. In fact, those four occurring within the last 28 days. So it's been one after another. And a lot of you probably wondering, you know, it's been so busy. Well, really hasn't for the majority of the season up until the last four weeks. We've had a lot of activity going on and two separate systems out there right now. We have Jose, which is the weaker of the two, but still causing some significant issues up and down the mid-Atlantic seaboard and up into New England, although the center is staying offshore and really kind of getting more of that shape of a comma in the indicative of a uh, nor'easter rather than a category one hurricane which is what the hurricane center has classified it as with wind sustained 75 miles an hour remember you need 74 or greater to become a hurricane so it's just barely at that it drifts off to the north and east and this is crucial here this track as it happens into this weekend if it sits there and meanders it is going to have some sort of interaction and in play into what happens with maria and if it has any sort of impact on the eastern seaboard or if it goes right out to sea. We're going to talk more about that in just a second. But here is Maria the Monster, our second Category 5 storm of the year. The last was Irma in generally the same area as we went through the last 10 to 12 days. Now a very well-defined eye. It made landfall last night in the island of Dominica and caused ravaging issues there. I mean, it just destroyed parts of that island. You see that very well-defined eye still. It's about 10-mile diameter eye wall there and the strongest winds in that northeast quadrant. And we pull up the radar here from San Juan, Puerto Rico, just now within range that we can see that defined eye on that radar echo. In fact, you can even see the eye wall, that area of yellow, indicating the strongest winds in that northeast quadrant of the storm. So here's the plot of where the islands are and where it made landfall last night in Dominica. And even that northeast quadrant moving through parts of Guadalupe had caused some serious damage there. In fact, Dominica, a population of 72,000 people, this was the first ever Category 5 landfalling hurricane on record. And in fact, all reporting stations there went out. Soon thereafter, it made landfall there. So we're still waiting to see how much damage actually occurred. Right now, the latest update from the Hurricane Center does put the wind field, in fact, hurricane force wind field, the diameter, up to around 70 miles out from the center. That's 74 mile an hour winds or greater. And then the tropical storm force wind field expands out 280 miles in diameter, so 140 miles in each direction. You're going to find slightly higher wind speeds in that northeast quadrant, right? Because you got to factor in that storm direction or the storm momentum. So you're always going to find this sector of any hurricane having the strongest winds. And that's where the hurricane hunters this morning found winds sustained of 167 miles per hour. All right, who's next? The U.S. Virgin Islands and eventually Puerto Rico within the next 12 to 24 hours. An imminent situation here. It's heading for the most populated areas of Puerto Rico. Could be disastrous there. In fact, only four recorded Category 4 storms or higher have ever hit Puerto Rico. This could be the fifth one, possibly making a direct landfall. We switch up the imagery now and show you the visible. Very symmetrical system, very healthy looking over warm waters, favorable wind shear. We have a defined eye center here, about 10 nautical miles there. You can actually, if you get right over it, you can see down to the ocean surface. That's just how cleared out it's become. Hurricane watches and warnings up for pretty much the Leeward Islands all the way up towards Puerto Rico and even towards the Dominican Republic up to hurricane watches there right now. We get close on into Puerto Rico and the U.S. and British Virgin Islands all under that hurricane warning good time now to refresh yourself on what a watch and warning actually does mean. Watches gives you a little more time, 48 hours usually in advance of indicating the risk of some hazardous weather. Warning a little more urgent. The event is either occurring, imminent, or likely, which is what we're seeing here over the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Category 5 storm right now, the latest numbers from the Hurricane Center as of 11 o'clock this morning. Sustained winds of 160 miles per hour, 
Again, highest likelihood of that is going to be in that northeast quadrant. And there's something I want to show you here. It's a Category 5 right now, but it is expected to weaken down to a Category 4. I mean, really small drop in any intensity here. Still winds of 155. But I think the National Hurricane Center is anticipating something called an eyewall replacement cycle, which typically occurs in storms that are this intense. They kind of build those thunderstorms in so intensely that they kind of clog out the eye and it has to reform another one. And that usually leads to a little bit of some weakening here. So they're anticipating that. Not sure if it'll actually happen. It may even stay a Category 5 as it heads towards the island late tonight. Then the cone of uncertainty grows ever so larger the farther out in the future we get. Up to around five days out, we're about 225 miles in either direction from the center line here. So the center of Maria could track anywhere within that with this certain cone. So we're going to have to watch that closely. All right, Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Maria tracking in pretty much the same area over the last uh, two to three weeks. But there is a distinct difference here. Hurricane Maria just to the south by about 200 miles, and that means that warm, very warm water is untapped. Plenty of energy there. It's almost like a powder keg just waiting to be used, this energy. Look at these water temperatures, 85, 86. Degree or two doesn't really mean much to you and I. It's indiscernible, but that one degree is that just that much more energy that's available for these storms to use and produce astounding results in terms of interaction with any land surfaces. So how much energy does a hurricane actually produce? Pretty cool stuff here. Due to uh, the amount of energy needed to form the rain and the clouds with any hurricane, needs 200 times the world's total electrical generating capacity. Think about all the energy that's produced in the world. It needs 200 times that just to form the rain and clouds. And then the wind energy needed for that, one and a half times the world's, or excuse me, a half the world's electrical generating capacity. And according to NASA, during a hurricane's life cycle, it can expend as much as much energy as 10,000 nuclear bombs. Unbelievable, right? All right, here's where the models are taking this thing. We're taking the GFS ensemble here. Remember, that's one model run 20 different times. And there's more of a consensus than when we spoke yesterday. It's not all over the place, especially way out in that forecast period, starting to get a general consensus of where this may be going. And notice all of these keeping it offshore. And that's dependent on a couple things we're going to talk about in a second. Where's all the other computer models going? Pretty much in the ge same general direction, somewhere to the south and west of Bermuda and to the east of the eastern seaboard. So that's some good news there. All right, the overall setup that we're going to be watching. At, remember I told you that the interaction with Jose is going to be crucial in what actually happens with Maria after it gets somewhere north of the Bahamas by later this weekend. The circulation that's happening is there's a ridge of high pressure developing over southeastern Canada. That's going to trap Jose, kind of keep it in the same area it is right now. And that's going to weaken also an area of high pressure out in the middle parts of the Atlantic that's been kind of steering Maria this whole time. That weakens, so that's going to allow Maria to dive north. And eventually the interaction with Jose something called the Fujiwara effect, is going to make it pivot out to sea and gone. So as long as Jose remains, we will see Maria go on out to sea. So the Fujiwara effect, in essence, is when two hurricanes collide. But we're not looking for a collision here. We're looking for more of an interaction. They're going to kind of alter each other's paths as we get into early next week. So the Fujiwara effect is when two storms of similar but not identical size orbit one another until the stronger storm absorbs the weaker. That's if that circulation or that orbit continues for a while. This is not going to be the case here, but certainly something that's very interesting and very, very rare, especially in the Atlantic Basin. All right, you have any questions on the storm? Join the conversation on social media. You can find me on Facebook, meteorologist Tim Pandagis, or on Twitter, 13 Tim Pandagis.